As we prepare to enter 2025, there are at least three major forces that I'm seeing that are completely changing the way we do SEO and digital marketing. Businesses who don't adapt will be left behind, but stick around because I'm going to give my perspective on how you can not only survive this shift, but leverage it to your advantage. So I won't bury the lead. The three biggest forces that I'm seeing impacting SEO are AI assisted content creation as the new normal content commoditization, and the rise of Google alternatives to search. Let's start with the first one, AI-assisted content creation as the new standard. Now, for those of us who've been in the SEO game for a while, we know that AI-assisted content creation is nothing new. I mean, I remember playing with Jarvis or Jasper or whatever it was called back in 2021, and that was years before ChatGPT was even a thing. But what's different now is that even non-technical business owners and founders are assuming some form of AI assistance in the content creation process. I recently spoke with two business owners in vastly different industries and both of them independently said that they were planning on either producing or ordering bulk AI content for their content strategy. This is the future guys and it's not going away anytime soon. So how should SEOs and website owners, digital marketers, how should we respond to this? Well, two things, I think. The first is we need to have a deep familiarity, and I would even say mastery of these tools and be able to put them in their proper place. That is, as an assistant helping us write, not as a writer that we simply assist. The big ones to know are obviously ChatGPT, but then you also have Claude, Cursor, Perplexity, and Surfer SEO. And secondly, some brands will understand the proper role of AI, but others, oh boy, it's gonna be like pumping out thousands of pieces of soulless boilerplate content onto the internet. But this is a good thing. This is a prime opportunity for folks like us to stand out by adding expert perspectives, firsthand experience, engaging on-page elements, research that isn't immediately available in the SERPs. Remember EEAT? That's still a thing. Hear me say this, guys. Bulk AI spun content without any humanization or human intervention cannot sustain consistent organic search traffic. Jake Ward showed us this in 2023 with his controversial SEO heist that took the community by storm. He copied a competitor's keywords, spun up some AI content, and got some really impressive results only for it to crash and burn a couple of months later once the algorithm and users found out this content kind of sucks. Brands that take extra care to add more value and humanization to their content will be the ones that stand the test of time. And that leads me to the second trend I'm seeing affecting our industry, and that's content commoditization. Content commoditization happens when content loses its unique value and essentially becomes interchangeable with the dozens of other similar pieces of content on the internet. And we're seeing this play out at a massive scale going into 2025. The flood of AI content means hundreds of articles are all being produced on the same topics using the same language patterns, the same large language models, and the same training data. When everyone has access to the same AI tools and prompts, you get what I call SERP staleness. Basically a bunch of articles just saying the same thing in slightly different ways. But listen, I don't blame publishers for this. Heck, I don't even blame Jake Ward for his SEO heist. I blame Google. This is the content that they've been incentivizing us to create for the past several years but I don't think these tactics will last forever. In this AI bubble that we're in, it's gonna pop. So what's the answer? Well, in addition to creating more well-researched content, like I said in my first point, I think the businesses that are going to succeed in this new era of SEO are going to spend just as much time on their content packaging as they do on their content depth. A great example of this is this post by Maze targeting the keyword UX research methods, which honestly features everything you could possibly want in a piece of content. You've got a video version to consume the content in a different format, which by the way, pro tip, if you're not embedding YouTube videos into your content, you absolutely should be, even if they're not your own YouTube videos. Anything related to the topic will do because when someone clicks that play button and sits there and watches that YouTube video embedded on your page, you're getting credit for that dwell time. Okay, back to the maze post. You also got original graphics that help drive the concepts home. 
intermittent calls to action that gently promote their products, tables for presenting data in a new and interesting way. I love these TLDR callouts that summarize sections and break up the copy and the icing on the cake, an expert quote from a subject matter expert outside the organization. So, okay, this looks really nice, looks great, but what does this have to do with SEO? Well, there's two things right off the top of my head. Number one is it's gonna attract backlinks simply because it's novel, it's different, it's engaging, it stands out from the rest of the content on the internet about this topic. And number two is these things increase dwell time. We don't know much about Google's algorithm, but we do know that how long someone stays on a page and how long someone stays on your site in general, your session time, your dwell time, whatever you want to call it, that's a huge ranking factor. And so if you can create these engaging elements that keep people on the page for longer, you're going to win. And while AI is certainly advancing, and maybe a year from now, I'll be making a different video because this isn't relevant anymore. At this point, it's not quite able to create these sorts of graphics, these sorts of assets from scratch consistently. So that is another moat that you can have against content commoditization. Here's a pro tip. Copy and paste your entire blog post into an AI assistant like Claude with the following prompt. Please give me some suggestions for this blog post on engaging embedded elements I can use, such as, and then give it a list of suggestions. And don't worry, I'll have this prompt available for you to use in the description. At least two or three of these suggestions will be great places to start. You can even ask Claude to design an SVG mockup of these graphics that you can give to a designer or use as a starting point. One of the beautiful things about great content packaging is now you have all the assets you need for your other marketing channels. You have copy for your newsletter or your Reddit thread. You have graphics for your Instagram. You have a video for YouTube so you can start getting some of that sweet, sweet alternative traffic. And speaking of alternative traffic, that leads me to my third and final force that I'm seeing impact SEO and that's the rise of Google alternatives to search. So let me start out by saying Google is not going anywhere anytime soon, but man, publishers and users alike are really not stoked on Google search right now, and it only seems to be getting worse for them. Just in the past year, helpful content updates have tanked high quality sites for seemingly no reason. Google seems to be giving preferential treatment to large brands while needlessly punishing the heart and soul of the internet, independent publishers. And now that search GPT has dropped and it is really, really good, Man, there's some viable search alternatives that are really starting to nip at Google's heels. To combat this, I'm seeing some publishers actually add in perspectives from Reddit into their content, which I think is a great strategy. For example, informational queries like tips for replacing deck boards has a ton of helpful insights from Reddit users, specifically remembering to use joist tape, which isn't mentioned on other articles. But if Google doesn't fix their algorithm, and it's not really looking good for that, this is just a band-aid. The real answer, and I know you may not like it, is that as SEOs, we need to be more than just SEOs. I know it's cringe, but we have to be full stack marketers. We should all have at least a fundamental understanding of other marketing disciplines like social ads, pay-per-click, email marketing, community engagement, and YouTube. Even adjacent skill sets like direct sales, partnerships, and web design can only make you more valuable. I know this video can seem a little doom and gloom, but I genuinely believe that SEO is not dead. It's just changing, and businesses who change with it will be the ones that succeed. So let's review what we've talked about. AI assisted content creation is the new normal and it's not going anywhere. The solution is to leverage these tools for speed, but humanize our content with expertise, firsthand experience and research not readily available in the SERPs. Number two, content commoditization has made everything samey. To stand out, we need to double down on content packaging. And third, Google search isn't what it once was, meaning we need to start building alternative traffic sources and skills in other marketing disciplines. And one of these alternative traffic sources that I am loving right now is YouTube. If I were to write an article about how to get more organic search traffic, are you kidding me? I would never be able to rank for that. It would take me forever. But on YouTube, that's a whole nother story. And that's totally the video that you should watch next.